Okay, thank you very much and good afternoon everyone. Um, so, first of all, thanks for the invitation to tell you all about the um, chatbot that we implemented for COVID. Uh, this work was done by my colleague Liz Fallon, who's project manager in the IT department in, in Fingal. She coordinated it all, unfortunately she couldn't be with us here today. So I'll run through this for you. So first of all, what is a chatbot? Um, it's a software application that's used to conduct uh, an online conversation, either via text or speech, uh, in lieu of direct contact with a human. Um, why would we do this? Well, first of all, it enables us to provide a 24-hour service. There's an instant response from the chatbot, uh, consistent answers. Um, to be a record of the conversation can be helped by the, the citizen who's availing of the service. There's the potential for multi-language uh, support, um, also resource optimization that you can actually concentrate on getting your staff to actually concentrate on the more difficult and, and challenging problems and the more mundane issues could be dealt with by the chatbot. And the chatbot itself can improve with usage. So we had explored this uh, around two years ago and we were looking at the idea and we decided, okay, we'll, we'll go with a pilot for this. And we were all getting ready to run with our pilot and then this happened. So, we want to, uh, we'd like every other local authority, and it's been alluded to a number of times today, we were confronted with COVID, and of course we had our community response, the six main services that, were, that we covered in the, the community call and so on. But these were nine to five, Monday to, Monday to Sunday, seven days a week. But what about those other times uh, when we, we weren't contactable? So IBM approached us, IBM are based in Fingal, we've had a good relationship with them over the years, and they offered us the use of their uh, IBM Watson Assistant, which is their chatbot, um, free of charge for supporting citizens during COVID. So we decided to take them up on that offer, and that would double as the pilot that we had been looking to do on uh, a chatbot. So this is what the, how the chatbot surfaced over there on the bottom right-hand side of our webpage. Um, we, we started work on this uh, in the middle of May and uh, had it up and running and launched within a fortnight. So it was a, a very rapid development and a very rapid turnaround. Um, and in the first month of operations, we had 3,700 conversations handled by the chatbot. Um, so this is uh, zoomed in and you can see it's a very simple interface. Somebody asks the question, can I get help with my shopping? And then there's the answer there, how to actually get that help from the community call. We weren't the only lo local authority to do this. Monaghan County Council also uh, introduced and, and uh, produced a, a chatbot. Their chatbot using the same technology was for the restart grant for COVID. So just to acknowledge that. So this is just a, a look behind. As I mentioned all, already, um, we worked with IBM and uh, with the IT department and we worked with our customer care unit. We have a dedicated customer care unit where all of the, the interactions with the customer are coordinated there and also with council staff to identify what are those frequently asked questions for the community call and for COVID related questions for, uh, about our, our services, the council services. And really it was about what's the citizen looking for, what do we want to be able to provide answers for. And these are uh, surfaced in the chatbot as intents, and you can see them there. And there are a number of pages of these, and I'll scroll through them. So these are all the different intents that would be uh, defined. And there are a total of 53 of those for the, within the COVID chatbot that we had. So, and, and we're talking roughly about uh, 10 to 15 services here now, and broad services that we're talking about. And then for those, we would have user examples for each of these intents. So what are the type of questions that people would ask? So you can see here, I'm feeling, so for anxiety, loneliness, I'm feeling isolated, I'm feeling lonely, the type of things that people would type into the chatbot. Um, and we had 558 examples of those, so on average about 10 examples of questions for each of those intents. Uh, so obviously a lot of work to put these together. Again, remember this was done in a, within a fortnight. And then there are entities, things that people ask about. And if you look at one of these, for example, graveyards, you can see here graveyards with a, uh, a dash, graveyard, singular, plural, cemeteries, cemeteries misspelt, just in case somebody gets that wrong and so on. And then these can be configured. So if we see somebody has used some other term for cemeteries, they can learn, we can add that in, and, and it develops as, as we go on. And all of these are pulled together in a dialogue uh, which, which draws it all together, and then that's surfaced through this very simple interface. So you would, it, it belies the fact that behind it, there's a, a hell of a lot of, of things happening. 
Um, so uh, I, I mentioned already it's the community call once, but also there was the thing about council services, opening hours of council services, and I'll come back to that later on. So uh, what happened with this? What, what was the, the, the outcome? What was the usage that was made of it? This graph shows the numbers of conversations per month that the, the chatbot handled. As I said, when it kicked off in, in June 2020, uh, 3,700 conversations a month. And that gradually reduced over the months, uh, as you would expect, as people got used to and, and got their questions answered and so on. And it kind of plateaued at around 500 conversations um, a month this year. Uh, we retired it at the end of last month uh, alongside the cessation of the community call helpline. So when that ceased, we also ceased the COVID chatbot. Um, so just to compare that to our other metrics, uh, so the red dotted line is when the COVID uh, restrictions commenced. And you can see at that point, the green line is in-person calls. And obviously that dropped down to, to zero. And you also see the blue line where phone calls uh, increased dramatically. Um, but you can also see there that the, the, the chatbot stats are, are generally at the start are in line with the type of in-person calls that we would have been getting into the, the customer care unit there before COVID. So it gives us some kind of an indication um, of, of, what, uh, of the level of interest and engagement. If we zoom in further on those stats and compare it to the community call, here's the number of engagements with the community call helpline. And they peaked in, in April with 845 requests, and then they went down probably similar to, to most other local authorities. Um, I think it's important not to make uh, direct comparisons uh, with this, as, as firstly, citizens couldn't avail of a service directly via the chatbot, whereas if they're contacting us in person or via phone, they're actually looking to avail of a service. So generally, the chatbot was about information provision. Um, and, and secondly, an engagement with the chatbot could have then resulted in a phone call. So we could have directed them. So it actually may, you know, in some cases, you're, you're counting twice. But nevertheless, it gives you an indication of, of the, the level of engagement with it. So here's examples of some of the conversations. I've picked out some of these uh, that were in the last month before we shut it down. So is Balbriggan Library open? And you can see over on the right-hand side what particular uh, entity or, or in, intent it, it, the chatbot matched against. So is Balbriggan Library open? And it matched it against, is it open? Uh, again, uh, walk-in COVID tests matched it with COVID. Uh, I'm looking for a housing application form. I want to check the opening hours and so on and so forth. So you can see here that as well as the COVID-related questions, and particularly towards the, the end, the uh, people, citizens, were asking about council services, even though it was a chatbot service and it was labelled as such. But you can also see that we're getting the things that we usually get at our front counters, asking about nothing to do with the council, so power cuts in Port Marnock. <laughs> uh, and you can also see a question at the end there. We're stuck in St. Catherine's Park. The gate closed, two cars stuck. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, and there's a lot of statistics behind it and a lot of metrics. So in here you can see in the past month, 374 conversations, 24 with a weak understanding. So just to explore a bit about weak understanding, that means that 95% of the conversations, and that was consistent, 90 to 95% were well understood, but 5% aren't. And you're going to get that anyway with a chatbot or with an automated service. Um, so what do we mean? What, what, what are these weak understood? And we can drill down into them when, behind and we see power cuts in Port Marnock was not understood because it's irrelevant, not a service we provide. Lohunda, an area in, in Fingal, uh, what does that mean? What are you asking about? Uh, Shackleton Gardens, a new gardens that we've just opened. Uh, now, what, uh, and again, we stuck, just a quick emergency. Uh, and we'll drill into this, uh, we stuck a quick emergency now. So you can see, I drill into just a quick emergency, and here you can see at 20 past seven in the evening on the 19th of October, somebody engaged with this. Uh, they were engaging with the chatbot for 14 minutes. Uh, and it's the same item that we saw earlier about St. Catherine's Park, my car is stuck. Uh, obviously, this person must have accessed the chatbot via their smartphone. So it was out of hours, and also they were remote because they were in the park. That initial response probably wouldn't have been much use to them. Parks and Fingal are open in accordance with COVID guidelines. <laughs> it's not really going to get me out of the, <laughs> the car park. Uh, but then the next one we stuck, it couldn't understand it, but it presented them with the phone number. So I hope that they rang the phone number and got a Yowsley Hours emergency number and were rescued and they're not still sitting there in the car park waiting. <laughs> but it does illustrate the potential for the chatbot to be used in different situations, even though this was a weak understanding. And at least we got the contact number to them. So going back to those conversations and the council services, 
here's an, an analysis that we've done of some of those. So we could see that opening hours were by far, apart from COVID, the most requested, 20% of the time. 12% about housing, 7% about libraries. So even though this was a COVID chatbot, it very much demonstrated to us that there is a demand and citizens will use a chatbot uh, for council services. So what are our future plans? Well, world domination, of course. With our chatbot army, we're going to take over the world. <laughs> Not really. Um, but we do uh, foresee the creation of a local government chatbot uh, for all council services, not just those small number. Um, and uh, it is costly to set up. Uh, that's where a lot of the cost is. The ongoing cost is on a per interaction basis and is reasonable, but the real effort goes into configuring it in the first place. Those 53 uh, intents and those 500 user examples. Now, if you take that, that's for about 15 services, and as was mentioned earlier, we have circa 600 services. Well, now we're talking about 50 times the work involved in the chatbot to actually do all council services. So what we want to do is produce FAQs for Irish council services based on the National Service Catalogue, so there's a standard approach uh, across all local authorities. Enabling localization for each council, because opening hours will differ, contact details will differ, charges may differ, and so on. So while the general description of the service should be the same, there will be variations, and having the standard approach, but a variation for each local authority. A fully translated Irish language version, we had that for our chatbot, and that will be fully translated properly. Uh, but an automated translation for other languages to enable interaction by others. So you may get a bit of pigeon translation, but at least it will be understanding, it will be able to engage, and there won't be the cost that's associated with the full translation in Irish. Live chat integration is also possible. That will enable us to, if somebody isn't, uh, you know, we were clear from the outset to say this is a chatbot, this is a robot, it is not a human that we're talking to, and we're very clear about that up front. But that then if somebody isn't getting anywhere and wants to engage with a human, rather than saying, okay, you now phone, can we actually get them to switch to a live chat during business hours that they're typing and it's a human on our customer call center that's answering them back? And all of that is possible. Obviously, a bit of work for us to engage with our customer care staff because now what they're typing in is actually being recorded and there's a record of it as opposed to when you're just speaking. But again, that's all possible and will require training and so on. And finally, that this service will be available to all councils once established. So what we are doing is we're starting off with five local authorities in partnership to share that initial cost, but the tender that we're putting together for this, we have built into it that once it's up and running with those six, then all other local authorities can draw down and will become part of the community of the chatbot. So in summary, we see the chatbot complementing our existing uh, citizen service channels. We see it sitting in between the council website and our customer care unit. Uh, that's them there during COVID with our chief executive and our, our mayor, uh, allowing more targeted and quicker responses than the website and taking away some of the more mundane questions from the customer care unit and enabling them to focus on the more complex queries. Thank you very much.